Okay, next lecture, we are going to enter um, much more contentious territory. And we're going to discuss the history of personality disorders. What brought us to the current state of knowledge and is it knowledge at all? To which extent are we looking at personality disorders in the right way? What is the construct of personality? Is it a valid construct? And if it is a valid construct, is the, is the idea of personality disorder tenable? This is the entire personality is disordered, which is implied by, by the phrase. Then what's left? Who is left? What's the connection between identity and personality and per identity and personality disorders? How do memories affect all this? We will trace the development of personality disorders, the, the very concept from its beginning, and I hope and believe that we will cast serious doubt on it. I think, as quite a few others, other scholars do, I think personality disorders should be struck off the book and replaced with post-traumatic dissociative states. Or, alternatively, there should be a single diagnosis of personality disorder with various dissociative self-state emphasis. This is probably, this approach probably is going to be reflected in the next edition of the International Classification of Diseases, edition 11. And already in the DSM-5 we have a dimensional approach to certain personality disorders, including narcissistic personality disorder. I encourage you to read the alternate models in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, edition 5. But we are very far, we are very far from an integrative framework, which will give us real visceral gut understanding of what it feels like to be personality disorders. Some people attribute everything to shame, Masterson. Other people attribute everything to envy, Klein. Other people attribute everything to trauma and dissociation. Vaknin, among others. Maybe we should put all of this together. Maybe shame is a reaction to, to trauma. And because it's so unbearable, it's dissociated. Maybe we're just looking at the elephant. We are three blind, wise men. And we're looking at the end. One of us is touching the tail. One of us is holding the leg. One of us is extending the trunk. And we have three different disparate descriptions of the same animal. But it's still the same animal. Perhaps we should reconceive of personality disorders, not as a clinical entity, but as a process, a process of evading and escaping and avoiding and protecting from future trauma, an obsession with trauma, a compulsion connected to trauma and its avoidance. This, I think, is the closest we can get to understanding from the inside the inner experience of the personality disordered individual, it is a state of terror, of horror, a, a, a clear belief and conviction that the world is about to get him, that he is about to suffer again, excruciating, indescribable suffering. In personality disorder disorders, the various ways we choose to protect against this renewed experience, unwelcome experience, late, not lamented experience. And it connects intimately with dissociation because dissociation is how we keep everything separated and apart in the deep freezer until we need it. Had these fragments, had these processes been conscious, we, people with personality disorders would have all committed suicide, not only borderlines. And so, all these personality fragments, self fragments and self states and dissociated states and ego resources and whatever you want to call them, they are in cold storage. They are awaiting, they are in the inventory, they are deactivated. But they are there. They are there at the disposal of the personality disordered individual. The personality disorder is a narrative that bridges and papers over the fact that the self is not continuous, parts are missing. 
the fact that there's no glue holding anything together, the fact that it's a fragmented galaxy with stars that can't communicate because they're spinning away faster than light, the fact that it's a black hole, this intolerable realization, personality disorders, main and possibly only role is to create a piece of fiction, a storyline, a narrative, a movie script to convince the personality disordered person that he is a person when actually, by any definition of the word, he is not, not even close.